Continuation, Application of the Perfect Redemption Plan, Part 5, page 118. Jezebel's Spirit Jesus addresses a second religious spirit in the church, saying, I have a few things against you because you allow that woman Jezebel to teach. She saying herself to be a prophetess and to cause my servants to go astray and to commit fornication and to eat idol sacrifices. Revelation 2 verse 20 Both the Balaam and the Jezebel spirits are religious spirits. They appeal to religious people, but they are of the devil. Jezebel does not like true prophets of God. It is a spirit, not a person. So both men and women can be influenced by that spirit. It is a spirit of manipulation, witchcraft, sorcery, divination, fortune-telling and soothsaying, which is flattery. People like to be able to control the lives of other people. They like to rule over other people, but not to serve them. Please read the Bible study on the perfect redemption plan, The Lord is my shepherd. You will know the kind of leadership God wants. Also, read the Bible study on the heart of the son or daughter who is serving his or her father and who is his or her friend. It will help you to understand what you should not do, and you will be freed from manipulation and oppression which are part of witchcraft and sorcery. The Jezebel spirit is initially not aggressive. Remember, it is a religious spirit and Jezebel portrayed herself as a prophetess. So they initially start by giving you prophecies, but they are not prophecies according to the word of God. They are divination, for they are meant to flatter you, to draw you close to them, so that they will control your life. Jezebel has many disciples who spy for her. It is a monitoring spirit, like the medium and the familiar spirits, who tries to find out what goes on in your life. They want to know what goes on in your house, not because they care about you, but because they want to use information gathered to control you or to prophesy to you. That is divination because it is not from the Lord. Many times when they give you a prophecy, it does not come from the Lord, but they send people to spy out what was in your life and they make it sound like God spoke to them. They initially use flattery because they know the flesh likes to be flattered. But the word of God forbids us to flatter anybody. He who rebukes a man shall afterwards find more favor than he who flatters with the tongue. Proverbs 28 verse 23 A man or woman who flatters his neighbor spreads a net for his feet. Proverbs 29 verse 5 you see, people using flatteries are setting a trap for your soul. They are after something. No wonder that sexual immoralities are attached to the Jezebel spirit, for many women have slept with men because of the flatteries they told them. They tell them they are beautiful and there is no one else on earth that looks like them. And before you know it, the man is asking the sister to fornicate or commit adultery with him. So, you see, the flattery was not to marry the sister, but to only sleep with her. And many women would say, but he told me those nice words and told me he loved me. If he loved you according to the scriptures, he would have married you first before knowing you intimately. Read the Bible study on David's sexual sin exposed and he kept the good wine for the end and you will not fall into the hands of those predators. In Mark twelve thirteen to 17 it is written, They sent certain of the Pharisees and of the Herodians to Jesus to catch him in his words. And coming, they said to him, Teacher, we know that you are true and you care about no one. For you do not look to the face of men, but teach the way of God in truth. 
Is it lawful to give tribute to Caesar or not? Shall we give or shall we not give? But knowing their hypocrisy, he said to them, Why do you tempt me? Bring me a denarius so that I may see. And they brought it, and he said to them, Whose image and inscription is this? And they said to him, Caesar's. And answering Jesus said to them, Render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. And they marveled at him. So their plan was to kill Jesus and catch him in his words. So they started by flattering him that he was true and cared about no one. He was not afraid of telling the truth of the word of God to any man, even to kings. So that was flattery, and flattery goes hand in hand with hypocrisy. Please read the Bible study on the leaven in the bread to know everything about the hypocrisy of the scribes and Pharisees. Jesus knew they were thinking something else about him, for they hated him and wanted him dead, and many times they had sought to stone him and had accused him of having demons, even the chief of the demons, Beelzebub. So now they wanted him to say something against the Emperor Caesar, so that the Romans would arrest him and crucify him as an insurrectionist. Yes, it is a Jezebel spirit, for Jezebel murdered the prophet of God, and Jesus is the prophet that Moses prophesied was to come, and we should all hear him. Jude says, these are murmurers, complainers, leading lives according to their lusts. And their mouth speaks proud things or great swelling words or bombastic words, flattering people to gain advantage. But you, beloved, remember the words spoken before by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, because they told you that at the last time, there will be mockers according to their lusts, leading ungodly lives. These are those setting themselves apart, animal-like ones, not having the Spirit. Jude 1 verse 16 to 19 Yes, those who use flattery are not from the Spirit of the Lord, but the Jezebel Spirit. Paul says, we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel, even so we speak, not as pleasing men, but God, who tries our hearts, for neither at any time did we use flattering words, as you know, nor with pretense of covetousness. God is witness. 1 Thessalonians 2 verse 4 to 5 if you want God to approve of your gospel, never use flattery, for it is of the spirit of Jezebel. You are a hypocrite. You do not mean what you are saying. God knows your heart. Ezekiel says, For there shall never again be any vain vision, nor slippery or flattering divination within the house of Israel. Ezekiel 12 verse 24 so first of all, God does not call it prophecy but divination, because it is not from his spirit. Balaam flatters for financial gains, Jezebel flatters for control, manipulation, personal worship and personal glory. God does not want flattery to be even mentioned in his house. We are the spiritual Israel, we should not have flattery in our midst, but we should speak the truth in love. As Paul says, but that you, speaking the truth in love, may in all things grow up to him who is the head, even Christ. Ephesians 4 verse 15 We should not seek to please men or women, but to please God. We are not to be rude to anybody either, for Paul says, let your speech be always with grace the unmerited favour of God and the divine empowerment of the Holy Spirit, having been seasoned with salt, because we are covenant people and the salt is a symbol of the covenant that we have with God. The salt in our words will stop the corruption in people's lives and in the world around us and God who can never break his covenant, he will perform his words, so that you may know how you ought to answer each one. Colossians 4 verse 6 
Let me not, I pray you, accept any man's person, neither let me give flattering titles unto man, for I know not to give flattering titles. In so doing, my Maker would soon take me away. Job 32 verse 21 to 22 so many times the Jezebel spirit tells you prophecies, but they are also divination according to the word of God. They flatter you by saying, you are a mighty man of God. You are a mighty prophet. You're a mighty pastor. You're a mighty apostle. You are a mighty evangelist. And you're a mighty teacher or a mighty prayer warrior, etc. They do that a lot to young Christians who do not yet know how to hear from the Lord, so that by giving them those flattering divinations, they will tell them, Now, you need to work with me so that you will become what I have prophesied in your life. They give you those flattering divinations to draw disciples to themselves, not to Jesus. Once you come under them, they literally control your life. They want you to tell them everything in your life so that they will pray for you. The reason why they want to pray for you is not to give the glory to God, but to keep you in bondage, so that when God performs a miracle in your life, you ascribe the miracle to their prayer and their anointing and not to God. When you do not tell them what goes on in your life and share a testimony of God's miracle in your life that they were not instrumental in at all, they are not happy. They even tell you you are not walking in love and in unity with the brethren because you did not share your problem so that we can pray for you. Jezebel wants to be worshipped and be the centre of attention. That is why she controls everything in the religious system she has established. So people who are influenced by that spirit think that they are the center of the universe, that God cannot answer anybody's prayer if they have not prayed for them. They, on purpose, do not teach people how to have a personal relationship with God or know the truth, because they know that if people know the truth and have a personal relationship with God, they will lose the control they have over them. When Jezebel feels like you are not one of her disciples, she starts persecuting you like Jezebel persecuted and killed the prophets of Jehovah. 1 Kings 18 verse 4 Anyone who does not agree with her in her way of thinking or doing things becomes her personal enemy. The way to detect the Jezebel spirit is they hate it when you tell them it is written in the Bible. They do not like it when you search the scriptures for yourself to see if what they are saying is in the Bible. They tell you that you are disrespecting their spiritual authority by so doing. It is to put fear in your heart and manipulate you. They tell you Christianity is theocracy, and my name is Theo. It was God who placed me there, so no one can question what I say. That is witchcraft. Yes, Christianity is theocracy, and we blindly follow God though through Christ Jesus and his written word, not a man. God made his ways known to us in his written word. The Christians of Berea were nobler than the other Christians in that they searched the scriptures daily to find out if what the great apostle to the Gentiles, Paul, told them was so. I was in a church and a brother wanted me to work with him. He started by giving me prophecies which were but flattering divinations according to the word of God. So I did not pay any attention to his flattering divinations. So he asked me to go with him to evangelize. I said no. It made him madder. So he came again and asked me to go and help him in the church that he had started. I told him it was not convenient for me to go there since I was already involved in Glasgow, Scotland. It made him fuming mad. So, whenever he was sharing the word of God in a Bible study, he would always attack me because he thought I was proud and I should keep silent and accept everything he was teaching, even if it was not according to the written word of God. 
After four years of trying to draw me to him without success, he became even physically aggressive toward me and started to wrongly accuse me of many things. So I came to that church in Manchester one Wednesday, and he was the one preaching. So he left the platform and came down to the audience and stood beside me, put his hand on my head and pushed it down violently more than seven times. As he was violently pushing down my head, he was giving a prophecy, saying, Some of you here are young and tall, handsome and always well dressed, and women think that you are a good husband to be, but you are violent people like the boxer Mike Tyson. Once you marry that sister, you will be beating her up. Some of you are so proud, and you think you know everything, and no one can even talk to you about anything, not even a pastor can talk to you. But I'm not afraid to tell you the truth, that you are proud. Some of you here are young and tall, and you are fornicating. And he was still violently pushing down my head with his hand, while giving his so-called prophecy. This was done to publicly humiliate me. It is a pure spirit of witchcraft. It is a spirit of Jezebel that has moved from the flattering divination to threats and murder. Read the definition of pride in this Bible study. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love and sound mind. 2 Timothy 1 verse 7 the Jezebel spirit causes depression and even suicidal thoughts because of its oppression and persecution. Elijah knew something about it, for when Jezebel was attacking him, he had suicidal thoughts and fled to hide in caves. 1 Kings 19 So you see, it is still in operation even in church. A brother who is a pastor told me that I should have removed his hand and told him publicly to stop. And that brother who is a pastor in that church said he would call that brother and tell him off. It is not acceptable what he has done. But I said to that brother who is a pastor in that denomination, Brother, do not do it. For Jesus already told me in the Bible, I say to you who hear, Love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, and pray for those who despitefully use you, and to him who strikes you on the one cheek, also offer the other, and to him who takes away your garment, do not forbid your tunic also, Luke 6 verse 27 to 29. So I let that brother push my head violently down and accuse me of fornication and other things. It does not move me. When you read all the four Gospels, when Jesus came close to his passion, the Jews accused him of many wrong things, but he did not even open his mouth to answer them or defend himself. Jesus tells me in the Bible, Blessed are you when men shall revile you and persecute you, and shall say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for your reward in heaven is great. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you, like Jezebel persecuted and killed the prophets of God. Matthew 5 verse 11 to 12 Peter, who witnessed the passion of Jesus, tells us, When Jesus was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but gave himself up to God who judges righteously. 1 Peter 2 verse 23 I decided to act according to the written word of God, for the Bible says, Born-again Christians are always in the Spirit, and we need to walk in the Spirit. Walking in the Spirit is just doing the written Word of God. I do not tell you that it was easy. Of course my flesh wanted to revile in return, but I remembered a scripture that helped William Seymour, whom God used to restore the Pentecostal movement in the beginning of the 20th century. Great peace have those who love your law, and nothing shall offend them or cause them to stumble. 
Psalm 119 verse 165 God is my judge and he will plead my cause. I pray for that brother that God will forgive him for he does not know what he is doing. The Bible says, Whoever rewards evil for good, evil shall not depart from his house. Proverbs 17 verse 13 God knows I have done good to that church and that I do not fornicate since God healed my backsliding and loved me freely. Hosea 14 verse 4 May God forgive him. So when I went home I wept. But the very next day God spoke to me and revealed to me what was going on in that church and he gave me Nehemiah 6 on August the 31st, 2012. I understood and decided to forgive them all. Every born-again believer, after he or she has received the knowledge and understanding of the perfect redemption plan of God and its application, must ask God what this assignment in the kingdom of God and in life is. As for me, God has called me in his kingdom to raise an army of 300,000 families in Glasgow, Scotland for him. 2 Chronicles 14 verse 8 and millions of families in 50 nations, even the 50 nations in Europe. Individuals and families are bold as the lion of the tribe of Judah, for the righteous is as bold as a lion. Proverbs 28 verse 1 who are all for signs and wonders because they are children of God. Isaiah 8 verse 18 to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease, cast out devils and raise the dead at will. If you are reading this Bible study, you and your family are one of the families among the 300,000 families in Glasgow, Scotland, and the millions of families in the 50 nations in Europe and all over the world. Join me in prayer for that word of God to come to pass in your life and the life of our family members in Jesus' name. I was commanded to build God a house of prayer for all nations, Isaiah 56 verse 7 and Matthew 21 verse 13. The Lord promises to pour out upon every disciple and the house of every disciple upon every city and village the spirit of grace and supplication or prayer like he did for the house of David in the city of Jerusalem, Zechariah 12 verse 10. Knowing that except the Lord builds the house they labor in vain those who build it. Except the Lord keeps the city, the watchman wakes, but in vain. Psalm 127 verse 1 Moses also was faithful in all God's house. For Christ was counted worthy of more glory than Moses, because he who has built the house has more honor than the house. For every house is built by someone, but he who builds all things is God. Hebrews 3 verse 2 to 4 People around you might question who ordained you, who appointed you, who gave you that authority and power. The answer to all these questions is Jesus did it for you. If you have read the series of the Perfect Redemption Plan and the application of the Perfect Redemption Plan, you know by now that it is God who ordained you, not man or woman, as it is written. The word of Jehovah came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the belly, I knew you, and before you came forth out of the womb, I consecrated you, and I ordained you a prophet to the nations. Jeremiah 1 verse 5 so, God has ordained you in your mother's womb to be a minister of reconciliation. Every born-again believer is ordained a minister of reconciliation. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 18 to 19 Paul knew that he was also ordained an apostle from his mother's womb, and it was revealed to men when he received Jesus as his Lord and Saviour. 
When it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb, and having called me by His grace to reveal His Son in me, so that I might preach Him among the nations, immediately I did not confer with flesh and blood. Galatians 1 verse 15 to 16 I am telling you, do not try to convince men of what God has called you to do. If they do not believe you, you believe it yourself. You must know who you are in Christ and what he has called you to do in his kingdom and not be moved by what people around you say. God will bring it to pass whether they like it or not. As Stephen explains to us about the life and calling of Moses, saying in Acts 7, verse 22 to verse 36. And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians, and was mighty in words and in deeds. And when a period of forty years was fulfilled to him, it arose in his heart to look upon his brothers, the sons of Israel. And seeing one being wronged, he defended him, and avenged him who was oppressed and struck the Egyptian. For he thought his brothers would understand that God would give them deliverance by his hand. But they did not understand. And the next day he appeared to them while fighting, and he urged them to peace, saying, Men, you are brothers, why do you wrong one another? But he who wronged his neighbor thrust him away, saying, Who made you a ruler and a judge over us? Will you not kill me as you did the Egyptian yesterday? And Moses fled at this word, and became a temporary resident in the land of Midian, where he fathered two sons. And forty years being fulfilled to him, the angel of the Lord Jesus appeared to him in the desert of Mount Sinai, in a flame of fire in a bush. And seeing it, Moses marveled at the sight. And as he drew near to see, the voice of the Lord came to him, saying, I am the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. But Moses trembled and dared not look. Then the Lord said to him, Loosen the sandal on your feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. I have seen the affliction of my people in Egypt, and I have heard their groan, and I came down to pluck them out, and now come, I will send you into Egypt. This Moses, whom they refused, saying, Who made you a ruler and a judge? God has sent this one to be a ruler and a redeemer by the hand of the angel who appeared to him in the bush. He brought them out after he had worked wonders and miracles in the land of Egypt and in the Red Sea and in the wilderness forty years. So, whatever God has called you to do in life and in his kingdom, it will come to pass. The enemy cannot stop you. God is so confident that nobody can stop his plan that he even prophesied the birth of Jesus from the book of Genesis in the Garden of Eden. Satan was present, Adam and Eve were present, and he said that the seed of the woman will crush the head of the serpent. The devil tried his best to stop it, but he could not stop God. So the plan of God in your life will come to pass. I need to confess to you something. When I first wrote the part on the gifts of the Spirit, some of the testimony that I wrote down were strong testimonies and the way it was sounding gave hints that, though I had forgiven some people who wronged me, but I was still angry. And in some part, I just highlighted some words in the scriptures I took, but I did not want to expound on those words, because I was simply lazy. So when I slept that night, the Lord woke me up in a vision. And he showed me that he had received the email of the part that I had written on the gifts of the Spirit. He marked it and said to me, This is not you, Jerry. I do not want you to remain angry. Your testimony still shows that you are angry, though you have forgiven. And you are lazy. You have just highlighted some words and have not expounded on them. This is unacceptable. 
He sent me back an email in that vision asking me to write what he had told me and the way he wants it to sound. When I woke up from that vision, it was 4.30 a.m. I was convicted and I repented of my sin and I said to God, I will remove some of the text in the testimony that were but my anger and deal with my anger and expound on the words I highlighted that he showed me that he wanted me to expound on. So I knelt down by my bedside and prayed, and the Holy Spirit told me, My son, you were rightly angry because of what some people did to you was wrong, and you acted on the word of God by not sinning as it is written, be angry and do not sin. That was good, but you have let the sun go down on your wrath. You should not have allowed it. Ephesians 4 verse 26 Now, it has been months that you still have some anger about it when you talk about it, and you've kept that anger in your bosom. I say to you, my son, anger rests in the bosom of fools. Ecclesiastes 7 verse 9 You are not a fool, for a fool is the one who says there is no God. Psalm 14 verse 1 You know that God exists and you have received Jesus as your Lord and Saviour, so why do you act foolishly as though you did not know the written will of your Father God? I was deeply convicted and I repented, and I said to God that I was sorry. I pleaded the blood of Jesus to even cleanse my conscience from that residue of anger, which is a part of the dead works, so that I can serve God acceptably. Hebrews 9 verse 14 So when I had finished praying, I removed the parts that God told me to, and I also expounded on the words that I had highlighted that God showed me He wanted me to detail. You see, I believe with all my heart that it is God that is writing these Bible studies through me, and what he does not approve of, he tells me to remove them. That is why I always humble myself in fasting and prayer when I write these Bible studies, because I know it's not me, but God who is writing through me. To be continued. <laughs>